Five national elections have been held in Nigeria since 1999, when the country returned to democratic governance after years of military rule. But only a handful of women have ever held public office. Just 3% of people elected into public office in 2003 were women. Let that sink in. 3%. By 2007, the figure increased to about 7% in 2015. The numbers once again declined to 5.6%. And today, we're asking, where are all the women? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. George Bennett Shaw was once quoted as saying, clever and attractive women do not want to vote. They're willing to let the men govern as long as they govern men. Well, funny quote, but not so funny anymore, especially in Nigeria. It is time for women to leave the proverbial kitchen where they claim to belong and form powerful kitchen cabinets. Today on the show, I'm being joined by excellent women who are going to lend their voices to this course. On our first segment, I'm being joined by uh, Nafisa Abubakar. She's a legal practitioner. It's good to have you join us. And I also hear that you're an author. Yes, I am. Thank you for joining us. I also have Busola Faiga Okbaulu. She is a broadcast journalist. It's uh, good to have you here. I hope I got your name right. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> okay. It's nice. It's so um, I, I wasn't wrong when I, sa I said we we're going to have intelligent and smart women to talk mm -hmm. about this. I'll start with you, um, Busola, because you are a journalist and we create platforms, supposedly, for these conversations to be had. And I'm sure that you've been doing this for so long. Uh, on this segment, we want to talk about engaging women. How has the media over the years, especially since the beginning of um, democratic rule in Nigeria, how has the media been able to engage women on issues of politics? The media has actually gone a long way, and the media is still doing a lot in that area, in the area of actually educating women on the need to participate in politics. Um, we still haven't gotten where we should be. But I'll say that um, the number of uh, women coming out these days is, is improving from what it used to be. Mm -hmm. But we still need more to be done. Then if you also look at another area where women are actually not given more opportunity to participate, to express themselves. I would say there are few governments who have actually had women in their cabinet. The number of ministers that were appointed is still nothing to drive home about. Another thing that bugs me is when we talk about leadership roles and positions, mm. we always get to talk about the ministerial appointments. Yes. How about starting from the party level? The only opportunity that you hear women attached to mm. it is the women, I mean, that's what the parties do, mm. women leader. So women, women leader, go and bring women for the campaign. What about women vying for other positions within the party? Because that, they say charity begins at home. Yeah. Yes. Why can't the women, and I'm not saying the men should give, I'm saying mm. why can't the women vie for those positions and show proof that they have something to offer? Yeah, they do. The two, but you find there had been cases um, during this last election where women have been asked to step down. It happened in Lagos, it happened in Borno. Step down for a male contender. Mm -hmm. And if we don't put our feet down, it will still continue to happen. Look at the SDP candidate in Kogi. She really, really fought hard to be able to come on board at the last minute, mm -hmm. even though it wouldn't go anywhere. But at least she learned her voice and she still came out the last minute to contest. Okay. I'm going to come to you, Nafisa, because mm -hmm. um, we're talking about engaging women here. Yes. That's the media. Mm -hmm. uh, you wrote a book, Girls Want to Run, something like that. Girls yeah. Just Want to Run, yes. Just, girls Just Want to Run. Um, we can't just tell girls to run. Mm -hmm. Where are they running to? What is, the, what is the thing? Because you see, people have to run towards something. Mm -hmm. What have you placed in front of the women to run towards? Okay, um, 
First of all, oh, I'm 26. Ah, so I'm you don't look a day old <laughs> at all. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty young at least in the political sphere. But I wrote that book to encourage or inspire first, educate and encourage young women to have an interest. Because we can't have women in politics if we do not have young women, if we don't start from an early age. Mm -hmm. The advantage I had is that I was from a very politically sensitive and um, informative family. So I was never shut out of the conversations I had to do with governance and politics. I went to a school where we had um, elections for senior prefects. I had an election. I was voted in mm -hmm. into a post. So these things were things I got to experience at a young age. So I never, I always knew that it wasn't out of place for me to engage them in the real world. Unfortunately, I went to a private school that <laughs> used to pay a lot of you. money, exactly. But a lot of the people, the young girls in Nigeria, some of them don't have access to education. Some of them don't have access to schools where that curriculum is being adopted. So they think that I was reading a post by Governor Erofa in Kaduna and they said he went to a particular school and the girl was telling him that she hopes that she can aspire to even enter public office. And he told her that, you know, I'm not really a fan, but he told her that there is nothing you pretty much cannot do. So these are girls in the north, in the east, the west, the south, that are tossed from culture that it, this is not a place where you should be. And that drastically needs to change. So the book literally tells you that, hey, you are needed here. You're not just needed in business, in aviation, in entertainment, in you don't belong in the kitchen. That's not where you were born to be. You were born to explore your potential in every sphere of life and politics. Is, is this message taken to the classrooms? Because you mm -hmm. have to break that mm -hmm. psyche. There are people who have been taught that they can be mm -hmm. seen but not heard, mm -hmm. you know? so. How do we break that psyche? Yes, you're talking about it, but is it taken to the girls in school? And how is that message being received? Well, when I was in my youth service in Ibadan, I actually had a school tour where we went to different schools, secondary schools in Ibadan, and broke this down to them, civic education, political education, into both the boys and the girls. Because shockingly enough, people seem to concentrate on the young women and, yes, the young women and the girls, but they forget mm -hmm. that we also need the men and young men by our sides because the perpetrators of this violence of telling women that they don't belong, they are mainly the men. They mainly form that culture. They are not our enemies, but they are partners in this fight for gender equality. It's not a he against she. Mm -hmm. It's a he for she and she for he in every aspect. Interesting. Um, back to you again. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, there were so many civic educational programs on TV collaboration with the Ministry of Information and the NOA when it was still alive and kicking. I don't know where it is right now. But that has totally left our screens. We do not even have that much of education on TV anymore. Even on the radio. Well, let's, let's give radio some more credit than TV. Why do you think that we are having that disappear? We need to go back to the drawing board. We need all these things to come back to life. The national orientation is there. What are they doing? These things are important to our daily life. Just like you said, having this kind of things in school curriculum mm -hmm. will go a long way to kind of mold the child. Civic education is important. Mm -hmm. Schools are not paying attention to it anymore. This is where we lent all the various pressure groups, uh, government and everything. Mm -hmm. There's need to place a lot of emphasis on it. Mm -hmm. To mold the children properly for better tomorrow. And I believe that this country still have good potentials. We only need to nurture them and it will, they'll come out great. But what is the problem of the media? I'm still asking that question. What is the problem of the media? We seem to have been carried away by other things, but I'm wondering why is... Because I tell you what, I might not be as old in the profession as you are, but I know the ABCs of the media is to educate, yes. to inform, to form, and, and to, to entertain. entertain. Yes. Now, the very first thing is somewhat not 
being found on the media anymore. We're more of entertainment than later. What exactly is wrong with the media? And that's uh, including myself. <laughs> The media is still is, is still in, in, in informing, but are not educating in this regard. It's still informing and still educating, but um, the way we're going about it is not right. We need to actually do more, more in educating everybody, most especially the women. Each media house has to pay a lot of attention in educating women, encourage women. Yes, we play it is a lot of emphasis uh, on uh, politics, let them come and all uh, what, but give women more chance. Dedicate a program like this. If each media house does things like this, I think it will go in the right direction. We keep saying that um, we don't have enough women in the lower chamber, in the upper chamber. But what are we doing to encourage them? What are we doing to help nurture them? It's very, very important. So you're saying programs, uh, conversations, we have to... That's what, what is going to engage the women in the police We need process. to do it. We need to do it. Let's talk about the home front. Um, you're interestingly, you come from a family where mm -hmm. you know you have a political background. But how many people are um, open to that? As much as they go to school, if the schools teach you, uh, or you have girl groups that you join where yeah. NGOs are beginning to do that, what about in the home where you're not given an opportunity to think in that direction? So, no matter what you're being taught in school, when you get home, it is suppressed. We have traditional suppressions, we have cultural suppressions, and we also have institutional suppressions, oh. especially if you're going to a mixed school where, you know, the boys get more opportunity. They say, shh, as a girl, you shouldn't talk too much. You should be prim and proper. You shouldn't be engaging in these kind of arguments. So, you to be seen, not to be heard. Exactly. So what do you do about the home front? Because if you can break that hegemony of all that thinking, it's going to be, the child is going to be confused somewhat. So what happens in the home for your parents? Mm -hmm. how, how are we supposed to do that to appeal to parents? Because even as we want to engage the women, how can we engage the parents so they can help the children? First and foremost, what I've come to realize that parents of these days have actually mortgaged their responsibilities to the school. They leave everything to the school. Parents are not taking charge of their children anymore, and that is wrong. They say charity begins at home. You need to teach your children the right way. You need to give them a good foundation. You don't leave everything to school. You don't leave everything to, 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 to your house help or whatever. That's wrong. We were not brought up that way. So why do it now? There, there are lots and lots of things that the parents can inculcate in their children. I'll play the devil's advocate. Where is the time? You're in Lagos traffic, have the time, and you have to go to work to be able to pay that expensive school. Out of no time, I out mean, of no time, time, out of no time, you create time. Out of no time, you create time. No, the little bit time, create it and let it be a continuous thing. You see, the children we have these days are very, they are, they're very bright. They pick up things very fast. And when you tell them this, and the next time you tell them, they'll pick it up. And they ask you questions. Questions you cannot hide away or keep away. Like in our own time, um, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to, to say this. This, this was how I was taught. Mm -hmm. That was what my mother told me. Mm -hmm. You don't ask questions. So whatever they tell you, you just take it in. But the children of nowadays are different. They're different. 
Interesting. Nafisa, do you engage with young children and girls in schools? What is the engagement like? What questions do they ask you? And she said that these they're very curious these days, mm, I can tell. What are the questions that come to you very often, the, unique, the most unique of the questions that come to you? Okay, well, yes, I do engage with them, but I... Particular questions, not so much, but I can give the category which usually falls into. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was growing up, I had the privilege of not just having my um, the older parents as mentors, but also having people that were closer to my age as mentors. But as I grew up, I noticed that that was in, not a lot of young girls had it, and especially these ones that are coming up right now. So when I meet most of them, the first thing that they do is that, oh, they want a mentor. Oh, they want a mentor. You just need someone to help them navigate so it's not so much even about politics in itself yes they're interested and everything but it's more about mentorship because sometimes they see even the ones that are very interested in politics and the role models they have are like Amina J. Mohammed, you have Hillary Clinton, you know, different Natasha Apoti. These are women, women that are in their 40s, late 30s, 50s, 60s and it's such a very huge disparity from for them. Mm -hmm. So they need someone in that, that falls in that middle range, that is relatable to them, that can speak their language, that they see it's not so hard to get here, that if she can get here, then I can get here, then from where she is, she can, you know, she can also lead me to get to where you know, that role model is. It's such a huge gap. We don't have a lot of people within that middle space. How do we, this is a question I've been hoarding, but I'm going to have to ask it now, and I don't mind asking it later. How many women who have successfully, you know, navigated their way to a leadership position mm -hmm. or have been able to single themselves out to be someone where you could actually say, oh, that's a leader of sorts in whatever they're doing. How many of those women allow themselves to mentor or allow other people to draw from them? To be honest, from my experience, not many. Luckily, I have I was put under a mentorship program from the National Democratic Institute in Abuja. I have a mentor, Honorary, um, Honorable Fatima Mohammed, based in Lagos, yeah, and she's been an excellent mentor. But to be honest, it's it's not all of us that have access to that sort of, you know, mentorship. Not many, to be honest. That's true. And I ask because I'm, I'm I i do not like the title feminist, but I support everything women. Women. But you see, we all want to be feminists, but how many of us are supporting women? We want women to get this and that, but how many women are ready to stand by women? So how do we expect these men to respect whatever we're asking for? We are also the problem of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't encourage other women. Mm -hmm. We don't stand by our women. We don't give kudos to women who are doing well. We kind of sometimes want to try and bring them down. And that's wrong. It's time that we all come together and support our fellow woman. Women. Any woman that is doing well, let's commend her. Let's encourage her. Until we get to that point, until we're able to do that, we just keep going up and coming down. And you will not have enough women in politics. And there's no way we'll be able to aim high or in future have a, a female a strong female force. governor. Or what's, what, what's stopping us from having I have so many more questions, but we'll, we'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking about uh, grassroots supporters, mostly women, uh, and the violence that they experience in politics. But before then, we have a report on women in politics. So we'll take a look at that and we'll be back. Nigerian women in parliament have demanded for 50% affirmation action in elective positions in the country. This was at the roundtable discussion on improving women's participation in politics in the country. The chairman of the House Committee on Women in Parliament, Honorable Taiwo Oluga, said only 12 female parliamentarians returned in 2019 out of the 22 that were sworn in in 2015. Honorable Oluga said this is worrying as Nigerian women are being pushed out of politics. The women inclusion in politics in Nigeria has never exceeded 7%. In fact, 
it remains 6.7% till date. This is very sad. This is despite the fact that over 51% of women are involved in voting during elections in Nigeria, and women account for at least half of the nation's population. The need for a roundtable discussion like this, where the factors limiting women participation in, polit in politics will be discussed with a view to, of finding a permanent solution to the problem is pertinent. Government needs to really uh, be sincere about, uh, about, about, about this matter. Uh, anything you give, anywhere you see a woman, I always say this, anywhere you see a woman, watch it, there will be peace. Anywhere you see a woman, there will be progress. You know? And anything, anything you keep with a woman, consider it that it is safe. We men are mothers, we are wives, we are daughters. We should not throw out the norms, the basic rules, the house rule that your father laid when you were a toddler. Who said because you're a politician, you throw those ones to, to the dustbin? Hold those values. All right, well, back. Uh, that was women. Uh, it was a meeting, women's meeting, and of course, politici female politicians talking about what is dragging them back. Now, we have just a few minutes, three minutes to go. Mm -hmm. um, how strategic can we be about, or deliberate can we be moving forward? The world is 50 years ahead of us. And I know that our democracy is pretty young. But the world and the future is female, whether we like it or not. Everybody is facing that direction. Definitely. What are we doing as women to support women or strategically place this women so that they can benefit women in the future? I'll start with you. Okay, well, I sit on the board of Wild and it's Women in Leadership's Advancement. So they have a program, we have a program called Elect Her. What that does is that it, they have a crowdfunding platform where they raise money for women that want to run for office. Mm -hmm. And they select them and they train them. Mm -hmm. That's what we need. We need a network. And how that, big is it? How big is it? It's just in the beginning phases, but it's getting, it's, it will get bigger before 2023. We have to start somewhere, you know. <laughs> okay. We have to empower women. You know when we hear empowerment is, <laughs> Rapa, <laughs> no, not, no, not, rice is not uh, that salt. Kind of, not, not that. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just be clear about Empower it. Empower women. Educate women. It's also very, very important. And come together as a group to always support everything that has to do with women. It is very important. And if we do that, by the next uh, few years in Nigeria, I'm sure we should be able to have our first uh, female governor, if not uh, have more women come out. Or oh, a female speaker of the House of, you know, whatever. Oh, well, we did have one, but... We, <laughs> we, what well, but what I, I, I want to say thank you to my guest, um, Nafisa Abubakar, legal practitioner. Of course, Busola Okbolu, she's a broadcast journalist. Very interesting conversation, ladies. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming. Thank you. Well, we'll take a short break now and we'll come back to talk about grass, the grassroots supporters, mostly women and violence in politics. In case, a case point in the PDP women leader who was killed in Kogi State, nobody's talking about her. We'll be right back.